Shove it, man! All right, shove it, squad. It's time for Ring of the Hawk, the show where I watch every single match of a wrestler and then rate them to see if they're capable of wrestling in Ring of the Hawk. So if you know someone, brother, who could do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha-ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! So, so far on Ring of the Hawk, we've seen Garrett Bischoff massively fail, and we've also seen Umaga also competing over on Patreon. Head over there if you want to see that. Link's in the description. It was a good watch. Although Garrett failed, Umaga didn't do so badly. On a business front, because the Hawk's all about that business, I really want to get some t-shirts out there, but art is not my strong point. Wouldn't you love to be in the gym working out in a vest that says I shove it daily? Or you can tell a roider to shut up or I'll smack him one. So anyone who thinks they can bang out a design for me, please get in touch. And also, if you want to see Marky D get a hawk tattoo, let me know down below. There's one episode of Rinka King left, and after that I'm going to have an open slot on my channel for a new series. I've had some mixed responses, so I'm going to hold a vote, but the videos people want to see the most seem to be going back and watching TNA from the start and doing a funny commentary over that, and also some people want to see me tackle AEW. I know I'll get slaughtered if I say anything bad about them though. Sorry for all the announcements, let's get it on. So when researching this video, I had no idea how much controversy there would be. This has turned out to be one of my most interesting videos in a while. So let's find out right now, can Rikishi get a job in Ring of the Hawk? Match 1, Christian vs Rikishi. Rikishi was brought into TNA during Samoa Joe's feud with Christian, because Joe is a half-breed Samoan and Rikishi is a full-breed Samoan. He comes out wearing a nappy that says Bootylicious. Rikishi slaps his ass to join in with the TNA fans chanting. They seem really happy to see him. Rikishi keeps scaring Christian with his ass and then he hits a massive back body drop. Rikishi then catches Christian off the top and hits a rock bottom but he can only get a two. Kish then knocks Christian off the ring apron with his ass. Yeah this is going to be a trend in this video. Maybe try a drinking game where you drink every time I say the word ass. Rikishi then tries to drop his ass, oh there's another one, on Christian but he misses. Rikishi is really dominating this match and hits a belly to belly for a two. Christian tries to mount a comeback to Rikishi, but he gets hit with a super kick. Rikishi then squashes Christian in the corner and goes for the stink face, but Christian moves to the top and Rikishi slams him from there. Rikishi then goes for a bonsai drop, but Christian gets his knees up. Rikishi then nails Christian with a beautiful Samoan drop. I hate it when smaller wrestlers try and use this move, it just doesn't look as impressive. It should just be reserved for Samoans and fat guys, and Rikishi is both. AJ Styles then runs out who's part of Christian's coalition, but Rikishi kicks Christian again. Rikishi then goes for a Rikishi driver, but AJ stops him and Christian rolls up Rikishi for the free. Apparently he's holding his trunks, but it just doesn't look very good. A very impressive first showing for Rikishi in TNA, and he obviously still had it at this point. I'm going to give this one a C. Rikishi gives AJ and Christian the stink face after the match, but then Tomko runs out, and then Samoa Joe runs out to make the save for Rikishi. Match 2, it's an 8 man tag match, it's Triple X, AJ Styles and Christian Cage versus LAX, Rikishi and Samoan Joe. The crowd are really behind Rikishi during his entrance. AJ Styles starts out by poking Rikishi in the eyes and tries to double team him with Daniels. Rikishi then takes out both members of Triple X on the ring apron. There is a huge strength advantage to Rikishi's team, so the heels isolate the weakest member, Homicide, for ages and ages and ages until he hits a double DDT. The match then breaks down and Rikishi hits a Samoan drop on Daniels. Rikishi then hits both members of Triple X with his ass. He then gives the stink face to Christopher Daniels. He then goes for the Rikishi driver on Warrior, but AJ flies through the air to save him. Warrior. That's twice that AJ has stopped him from hitting that move. It's annoying because it's one of my favourite moves in wrestling along with the three quarter net breaker. I just want to see it. LAX then go nuts and start destroying everybody. This is a great match, it's really underrated, but Rikishi isn't doing much in it unfortunately. Elix Skipper then gets involved, so Rikishi nails him with the Rikishi driver. Yes, there it is. Beautiful move. Joe then hits a muscle buster on Warrior for the free. What a main event. The match itself is an A as far as TV matches go, but I'm grading Rikishi's performance and he didn't really do that much overall compared to his teammates. Let's give Rikishi a B here, but I did just love this match. Match 3. First of all, I will say it was a complete nightmare getting this match. For some reason this episode of Impact is not on Impact Plus and this match is nowhere online so this might be the first time that any of you guys have seen this one. So sorry for the video quality, it's the best I could find for this one. It's LAX and Rikishi versus Team 3D and Kurt Angle. Matt Boring is the special enforcer in this match. Let's find out why this match is so hidden online. It's the 11th of October 2007 episode. 
If anyone knows why this isn't on Impact Plus's website, please let me know. I'd love to know what the issue is with this episode. I have noticed that LAX and Rikishi like to play rock, paper, scissors before the match to decide who's going to start off. I think all matches should start like this. Rikishi tags himself into the match and hits a belly to belly on Devon Dudley. He then tries to drop the ass, but Devon dodges it. Bubba then gets the tag, but Rikishi whips him into Hernandez, who springboards into the ring. Beautiful teamwork. Just like the last match, Homicide is isolated by the bad guys. Kurt Angle steals one of LAX's bandanas. <laughs> Kurt is such an underrated comedian. I have to shout out this Alabama slam that Bubba hits on Homicide. I love that move. This is another great match. Since I've been doing these videos, I really starting to think that 2007 is my favourite year of TNA. It had a great mix of wrestling, humour, storylines and star power. Plus it was the best year of James Storm and the paparazzi productions. Warrior. Homicide eventually makes the tag to Rikishi, who slams Team 3D's massive heads together. He hits a rock bottom on Kurt Angle, and then a super kick on Bubba Ray. And then he hits a Samoan drop on Devon. Rikishi then hits a belly to belly on Kurt for a two. Man, Rikishi is brilliant when he's cleaning house like this, there's nothing better. Rikishi stacks up Kurt Angle and Team 3D in the corner and gives them his ass. And then LAX get back in the match. The match then breaks down and Homicide tries to hit the Gringo Killer, but Kurt Angle reverses it into the ankle lock, but Rikishi breaks it up with a super kick. Kurt then falls into the corner and Rikishi gives him the stink face. Team 3D then nail Rikishi with a bad looking 3D and then Rikishi rolls out the ring. Kurt Angle eventually beats Homicide with the Angle Slam, although he did give a good account of himself. It's quite hard picking between this match and the last one, they were both amazing TV main events. Overall the match was not quite as good but Rikishi's performance was actually better, especially with that hot tag, it was a great flurry of offence and the crowd went nuts. I'm giving him another B here. What's clear is that LAX and Rikishi seem to have some amazing chemistry. Match 4, TNA Bound for Glory 2007. Fight for the right, reverse battle royal. <laughs> well, guys, I think Rikishi's run of great matches is about to come to an end. This match is legendary for how stupid it is. Somehow this is my first time watching it, so I'll try and include anything hilarious that happens, even if it doesn't involve Rikishi. To start out, I'm pretty confused about the rules. From what I can tell, the rules are that 16 wrestlers start outside the ring. The first eight who enter the ring will then compete in an over-the-top rope battle royal match. The final two remaining will have a one-on-one -on -one match. The winner will become the number one contender for the world title, at least I think. Rikishi is the last man to come out and the commentary team hype up what an advantage he has. But they also say that he might not be able to get into the ring because he's too fat. So he's disadvantaged at the start of the match, but then if he gets in the ring, he's got the advantage. What a weird match this is. All the wrestlers start brawling around the ring. Why don't they just climb into the ring? For some reason, Rikishi, the fattest man, is the first one into the ring. All the wrestlers are just standing around pretending that they're busy. Kaz hits a flux capacitor into the ring on Rude. Eric Young gets thrown into the ring. The Motor City Machine Guns, two of the fastest men, are almost the last ones into the ring. Lance Hoyt is just standing around staring into space like a complete idiot. What is he doing? James Storm is hiding by the announcer table. There's literally nobody in front of him. Why doesn't he get in the ring? Storm eventually does dive into the ring. Chris Harris is deemed too slow and isn't allowed into the match and there's a bit of a scuffle about this. So that's the first stage of this match over and it didn't let me down. That was terrible. Storm is thrown out by EY straight away. Rikishi starts battering all of the little men. Eric Young offers Rikishi a beer but Rikishi doesn't want it. EY then starts slapping his ass. Rikishi hits a double clothesline and a Samoan drop. He then hits a choke slam on Robert Roode. Rikishi then stacks four men up in the corner and batters them with his ass. EY and Lance Hoyt then collapse in the corner and Rikishi gives them the stink face. Everyone then tries to throw Rikishi out and the Motor City Machine Guns then work together to kick Rikishi out of the ring. Oh no. Oh, so Rikishi eliminated literally no one from the match after all that hype. How stupid. So this is the third Battle Royal I've watched in the space of a week and it's got to be the worst one. Umaga was booked so much better in his battle royal. Robert Roode hits a rock bottom on Kaz and launches him out of the ring. That looks like it hurt. Lance Hoyt is then eliminated by Roode. The commentary team say that this is to decide on the seeding for the fight to the right tournament. Wait, so the winner isn't the number one contender? That makes no sense. You need an entire video to explain the mess of this tournament. It eventually comes down to Roode and EY in a one-on-one -on -one match. They've had a very intense rivalry over the last year. Eric Young eventually wins with a small package. So EY has won the match, but he hasn't really won anything except being the number one seed in a tournament that nobody understands. As far as Rikishi goes in this match, he gets an F. Shocking booking of the big man. That match was incredibly stupid and nothing about it made sense. I hated it. 
Time for some backstory before Rikishi's fifth and final match in TNA. The week before his final match, Rikishi cuts a promo saying that he's the new breed in TNA, and then he forgets the name of the tournament that he's competing in. Then he starts channeling The Rock in his promo. He just seems like he's messing around. He then forgets his opponent's name for next week and calls him Rick Rude. A hilariously bad promo. I just had to include it in this video. I think I made that. The right for the fight for your right. What's that, Jabroni's man? You are facing Robert Rude. What are your thoughts on that? You smell that? I don't smell anything. <laughs> well, Junior Fatu faces Rick Rude or, or or Robert Rude or whatever that Jabroni's name is. Somebody gave a fresh air. So here it is, match 5, Robert Rude with Miss Brooks versus Rikishi. Fight for the right tournament, first round. So let's see how Rude reacted to this promo. First of all, Robert Rude came second in the Battle Royal, and now he has to face Rikishi. Sounds like he should have just not bothered. That doesn't seem like much of an incentive for him coming second. The stupidity will continue. I will explain that in a minute. This whole tournament is a complete joke. Rikishi has the upper hand early on on Rude, and Rude's looking intimidated. He tries to chop Rikishi, but he no-sells it. Rikishi tries to hit him with his ass, but Rude literally dodges it by a cat's whisker. Rude then snaps his neck, but Rikishi no-sells it and hits Rude with a super kick. Rikishi then goes for a bonsai drop from the top, but Rude gets his knees up. Rude then hits a DDT, which I thought Rikishi wasn't going to sell either. He did that in WWE. Rude then dives from the top to snap Rikishi's neck. Rikishi eventually fights back and nails a Samoan drop for a two. Rikishi then hits a choke slam on Robert Rude and he tries to just pin him with one hand. He seems to really want Rude to look like a jobber here. Rikishi then hits a huge DDT and Rude is stood up on his head. I love how Rude sells a DDT like that. Again, Rikishi just covers him with one hand. What's his problem with Rude? It's just unnecessary, isn't it? Rikishi then tries to hit Rude with his ass, but Rude pulls the referee in the way. Rikishi then hits the super kick on Rude, who falls into the corner with the referee. Rikishi then takes extra long to wedgie his fong right up his ass so Rude can take it as bad as he possibly can. Rude looks genuinely annoyed when he gets up and hits the low blow. Rude then brings a steel chair into the match, however Samoan Joe runs out and stops Rude from cheating and then he hits Rude with a steel chair. Rikishi then picks up Rude and hits a perfect Rikishi driver. And now I've had the pleasure of seeing that move hit twice, I love it. Rikishi then covers him for the free. I'm going to find it really hard to rate this match for Ring of the Hawk. It's Rikishi in another TNA main event. Four out of five of his matches were, and this performance and entertainment value were great. But what he did to Rude here was completely unprofessional, treating him like a complete jabroni. I like the match, but you need to have a good attitude in Ring of the Hawk. The Hawk needs reliable wrestlers to do the J-O-B to him. I'm going to give this match a D. He called Rude a jabroni before the match, and then he wrestled him like he was one, and then he beat him. Rikishi has said in shoot interviews since that he deliberately doesn't wash down there if he's given the stink face to somebody he doesn't like. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Rude took this move in the worst way possible. So that's it. That's the run of Rikishi in TNA. He left because he wanted more money. But in reality, I don't think TNA wanted him either. Rikishi apparently came into TNA with a terrible attitude and rubbed a lot of people in TNA the wrong way with his big star from WWE attitude. He was a lot worse than people like Booker T, believe it or not. Rikishi was supposed to be advancing in the fight for the right tournament, but because he was now gone, Chris Harris was put in his place. Final ratings for Rikishi in TNA then. Does he make it? Brother, you can't be in Bring of the Hawk if you think you're a bigger star than me. All you need to do is do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K every night, every day. But we can't have bad attitudes on Ring of the Hawk. So Rikishi gets a D for his time in TNA. His match quality was good, but he clearly didn't want to be in TNA. And I'm glad Robert Roode made it to the WWE to prove Rikishi wrong and prove that he wasn't the jabroni. That promo though, oh my gosh, got to be one of the worst in TNA history. They were complete idiots for letting that make air. So, so far on Ring of the Hawk, we've got two fails and a pass. If you want to see a wrestler compete on Ring of the Hawk, drop their name in the comments down below. But the only rule is that they can't have wrestled more than 30 matches for TNA. I'm just not going to have time for anything more than that. Thanks for watching.